Lucy's kitchen. It's Lucy's kitchen. She's Lucy and she's got a kitchen. Lucy's kitchen. And now that we've got your attention, let's cook. Hi there. Welcome to Lucy's kitchen. I'm Lucy and this is my kitchen. Today we're going to make sheet pan sausages with pineapple. This is a wonderful dish that is really easy to pull together, doesn't take long to prepare. It's uh, only 30 minutes in the oven and you've got dinner. So it's a perfect dish for you to have in your repertoire for those nights when you really don't have a lot of time to cook, but you still want something that's yummy and special. And that's what we're going to have today. We're going to start with our sausages. So these are pre-cooked chicken and apple sausages. I think that these are great. They're pre-cooked, so they'll caramelize very quickly and cook in the oven. Um, the other nice thing is that the flavor of these sausages really is a beautiful counterpart to uh, the, the sweetness of the pineapple. So we've got those. We're going to have some lovely red onions. Now these red onions have a lot of piquancy. They're a little sharper than normal onions and they have some color. So hopefully they'll maintain a little bit of their color in the roasting and their piquant flavor. Also an excellent counterpart to the sweet pineapple. We've got our ingredients. Now we're going to do a marinade. We're going to have lime. We're going to use the zest and the juice of the lime. We're going to use some soy sauce. We've got garlic. We've got some powdered ginger. We've got some uh, red chili flakes, salt and pepper, just a pinch of salt and pepper. We don't need a lot. And uh, sugar. When we mix all of that together, we're going to get a fabulous marinade that will um, give us a caramelized and uh, sort of a sweet savory, almost like a teriyaki. Not quite as strong as a teriyaki, but it'll be very, very good, especially with this chopped garlic and the lime. The two things together, they just, you know, they're, they're meant to be married. So let's talk about our pineapple. I've got this beautiful Hawaiian pineapple. When I was in Hawaii, I learned some secrets and some tips about pineapples. For example, it's very easy to snap off the top, you just kind of lay it on its side and, you know, grasp both ends and then just snap and it comes right off. It's very attractive too. You can make it into part of your centerpiece. And then um, the pineapple itself, probably you might not know, but when pineapples are picked in Hawaii, they are actually already ripe. They don't get riper in time. You really want to use your pineapple pretty quickly once you buy one because it's it's ready to go. It is ripe. And so what I learned though is that because of the way pineapples are grown, they um, tend to drain all of their sweetness into the bottom of the pineapple. And one way to counteract that is to turn it upside down and let it sit for about an hour so the juices can go back and meld with the others and eventually the whole pineapple has a beautiful sweetness. So it's really, really a cool tip. So that's, uh, that's about it. The only other thing I want to talk about is getting this skin off. It's uh, sometimes a little complicated, but one of the easy things to do is to just cut it in half. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut this in half and, um, and then we're going to peel it. And I found out also that in Hawaii, that tough core is given to babies as a teething ring. How about that? I bet that tastes pretty tasty to those little guys. So I'm going to just cut up the top. And you can see that there are these pineapple eyes and we don't want those. So we'll end up picking those out um, on our own. So I'm just going to cut it into chunks like that. this is probably the easiest way to not have to struggle. Now I'm cutting it, you know, to show you, but you really should be doing it with the pineapple flat side down so it doesn't roll around. And we just cut right through that skin. And okay. All right. Now I'm going to just go ahead and take my paring knife and we're going to just cut off the peel 
just like you would a watermelon rind. When you do it like that, you see, the, you don't get any of the eyes. So it's really a handy way to go. I'll bring that closer. You can get this whole pineapple peeled in no time. So I'm going to just take a shortcut, use my other knife, cut this pineapple, and then take the core out. Core is pretty visible. It's a sort of hard area in the middle, and it's kind of um, darker, and you can just cut right, right through there. And then we're going to just cut these chunks in half. Cut it in half, remove the core, and that's it. That's all there is to it. So we're going to do that with the rest of the pineapple, and then we'll move on to our next step. Ta-da. There we go. All right. Now my hands are getting a little bit oh, wet from all of this pineapple juice. I'm cleaning that off and dry off my knife so it doesn't slip. Next thing I'm going to work on are the onions. We want these onions to be in long wedges. Now I'm going to cut off the, uh, uh, the bottom of the onion and it's just not necessary because it still will hold together as long as you leave some of the onion core in there. Okay. So I'm just cutting that off because it's kind of ugly. And if the, and if it falls apart into uh, individual pieces, it's really fine. Okay. So we're going to just do like, mm, let's see, I think we're going to do six on each side. So we're going to get about 12 of these. In fact, we are going to get 12 of these very sharp knife and okay that's 12 actually that's six here's the 12 one two three four five six okay we're gonna set that aside and now we're gonna work on our marinade so let's get some of this out of the way. We can get started on the marinade. Just push that away. Okay, so I'm going to set it here in front of me so that you can see in this uh, glass bowl what we're going to do. So the first thing I want to show you is how to zest a lime. This little lime is so cute. And I have this wonderful um, zester. It's called a microplane. And my son gave it to me for Christmas one year, the best gift I've ever had because it just takes off just the outside, the green part. If you're using a lemon, it just takes the lemon part. If you're using an orange, it just takes the orange part. It doesn't give you any of that white stuff when you use a grater. So it's really something to have in your kitchen. And um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just run it across. So what happens immediately is that you have this little uh, white area and that means you've gotten it and it doesn't, look like much, but it gives us so much extra flavor. We're going to go all the way around this thing. Now, if you're using a larger piece of fruit, you definitely uh, are probably a little safer to go fast, but I'm trying to be really careful. I don't want to microplane my fingers. There's some on the inside of our microplane. Let's tap that down and pretty much all of it comes down. If there's any left you can just slide your finger in there and okay so we have the entire um zest of one line that's beautiful and now you've learned how to use a microplane which is a very handy tool as i said now that i've um, softened up this line because sometimes limes are really hard and this one's now it's like really nice and soft i'm going to go ahead and juice it so we'll just cut it in half and i've got my little handy juicer right here and set that aside i'm just going to juice this you might even have other kind of juicing tools they're all great okay so 
Now just turn it upside down. Well, in this case, because I'm using this particular tool and I'm slamming it down so that all of that falls in there. And then we're just gonna twirl it around a little. Dum, da dum, dum. It's all done. That's the lime. To the lime, we're gonna add some soy sauce. And I'm using um, one tablespoon of soy sauce. I've got one tablespoon of sugar. I've got a good teaspoon and a half of chopped, fresh chopped um, garlic. And so I'm going to put the garlic in as well. My pinch of salt and pepper, about an eighth of a teaspoon of each, about a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and about a half a teaspoon of great, uh, dried ginger. Now, if you have fresh ginger around, you can certainly substitute. This happens to be just convenient. And another thing is that it um, dissolves fairly nicely in this marinade. So it's up to you whether you use dried or fresh. I, I almost always use fresh if I can, but um, in this particular case, I think the dried works very nicely. Let's stir that around. And we've got this lovely marinade and I'm going to add a little olive oil to that so that when we, mar we uh, toss our ingredients into the marinade or we toss the marinade with our ingredients, the oil will help them cook. Okay, now that's it. Now I'm going to start with my bowl of pineapple and I have these um, onions, which I'm going to do separately. Okay. So we're going to just do this, pour it all in. So once you've, uh, added the marinade to the pineapple, you can use a tongs and toss it around. You want it to get nice and covered with the marinade. Um, you could use a spoon and you could even use your hands as long as they're clean. So this is nice. This is beautiful. Okay. I love this. Oh my goodness. So we're going to just, okay. I'm going to set that aside. I'll pull my pan a little closer. And this is my sheet pan. Now this is a sheet pan. You can also use a flat sheet pan. You can use a regular baking pan, roasting pan, whatever you have handy. You don't have to run out and buy anything. But the nice thing about a pan like this is it has fairly shallow sides. So that means everything roasts really quickly and also evenly. I'm gonna go ahead and just throw that pineapple in and it smells amazing. And has definitely a little bit of a teriyaki smell. Okay. Now we're going to push that back and I'm going to add my onions to this. And again, toss them till they get quite a bit of that marinade on them. So now we're just going to throw the onions in here evenly. It can be distributed. When you put the when you put them in evenly, what you're doing really is you're letting them uh, flavor other things that they touch. Like the onions will flavor the pineapple, the pineapple will flavor the onions. Ultimately, everything will flavor the sausage. The sausage will flavor everything. So that's why you want it to be even and okay. Now we have a little bit of marinade left. We're saving that until. We put all the sausages in. Now I like to just nestle the sausages in, like, you know, find a spot and uh, put them in all the way, like, so that they touch the bottom. Okay, then we do a little even distribution there. Do the same thing on this side. Whoops. Middle. And... Okay, so we're going to take our marinade that's left and 
use a nice brush and kind of scrape it all off the sides of your bowl and stir your brush around. And then you wanna brush the top of the sausages. And so they get a little bit of that deliciousness that you have in this wonderful marinade. And by the way, this marinade is awfully good if you wanna to just toss it with chicken breasts and just do a teriyaki chicken, it's awesome. I mean, it's again, not quite teriyaki, but very similar. You could do that instead of the sausages. If they're boneless breasts, they'll cook in about 25 minutes, um, which might be perfect. So, but we're doing sausages because I think sausages have a great, great flavor. Okay, that's it. We're gonna put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 425 and check on it and see if it needs anything. I don't think it will. I think we'll be able to taste it right then and there but I'll see you in a few. Oh, it smells wonderful. The pineapple looks great. Sausages are nice and brown. The onions are, they still have their shape and their form, but they are definitely wilted and they look caramelized. I'm very excited. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take one and Place it here, I guess, and then some of this beautiful pineapple and some of these onions and the, and I'm serving this with a little bit of a microgreen salad for color. Now, also going to sprinkle with a little bit of cilantro. Can't go wrong. And let's give it a try. Move this over a little. So the main thing we're trying is the pineapple because uh, of course your sausage is gonna vary depending on what kind of sausage you decide to cook. But if we take a little bit of pineapple with the sausage, then we might have something. So I'm gonna do that. Here's the sausage, pineapple, and together, We've got something. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Wow. Fruity, savory, and here's the onion. Oops. A little bit too big. All right, let's try that again. Onion. Mmm. Sweet. Mellow. Mm. Delicious. Well, I think we've got a hit. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Lucy's Kitchen. Don't forget to like and subscribe and come back next time when we share more delicious recipes from my kitchen to yours.